happy mates how are we doing today here's a part two video over at the Payne's Prairie State Nature Preserve up by Gainesville however though this time we're actually at the northern portion of the park so we're much closer to Gainesville but this is a bit of a different setting so now you're predominantly seeing more of that what you call marsh that I was discussing. You see right over there that little body of water? It may look little, but it's actually very vast. What you're looking at over there is something known as the Alachua Sink. So think of it this way. You know, you just saw the surface just a moment ago. But the thing is, the Alachua sink has a depth of roughly 80 feet and it's in direct connection to the Floridian aquifer and as I mentioned in my last video the Floridian aquifer flows underground through the limestone caves and other systems and it essentially supplies millions of people drinking water. And you got to admit, all of Florida, pretty much, just about, was once under the ocean. And so, due to marine organisms dying, they contributed to the formation of limestone. It also goes by calcite, CaCO3, calcium carbonate. There's a couple of different names that limestone goes by. But the bottom line is, limestone is primarily composed of calcium, and then of course, the carbonate that I speak of. But, yeah. Look at this. So it's quite neat to just see like how diverse this park really is. And I don't know if you can see see the moving wading bird down there. That is actually our well-known limpkin. Because I noticed when I was walking by here, I don't know if you'll directly see them, but down here, we have a lot of invasive apple snails that fall under the genus of Pomacea. And what's fascinating is these apple snail shells that I speak of, the invasive variety, their shells are huge. You know, probably in length, they're probably about five to six inches. And the limpkin as we can see right here. Let's see. Yeah, you can see them right there. They have an adaptation with their beaks that they can easily feed on those apple sna snail shells because they have a curvature on them. So it actually allows plenty of easy access Quite a remarkable adaptation, isn't it? But, yeah, just because of there being a present marsh here, as well as the karst topography that I was mentioning a bit more in my last video, you are bound to see plenty of of diverse wildlife in the form of wading birds, reptiles, amphibians, and a diverse array of plants, too. Like right now, I can actually see a bunch of uh, some pennywort as an example, but I've never seen so many limpkins in just one given area. I mean, look got another one right here they're looking for those apple snails 
because that's their main source of food. Wow. Give me a second, you guys. There you go. Got another fellow homie. Another limpkin for you guys. Wow. I didn't expect to be this close. Oh, there he goes. They were eventually going to fly off anyways, so. <laughs> so, yes. Essentially, you're seeing a representative of our watershed that is here. No matter where we live, we are above a watershed. So that being said, every conscious decision that we make, whether it be for disposal, water use, you name it, it will indeed affect the watershed, either negatively or positively. So it's always up to you. We need water. Because without water, we cannot survive. And so each action that we take is absolutely crucial. Because even though you may think you're just one person, it may not make a difference. It really does. At least along down the road. This place actually has a little bit of a history too. Which I'll talk about briefly. Not too far from here was a large uh, establishment of land called Hacienda de la Chua. And this was essentially one of the areas where the Spanish um, introduced cattle over here, which are some of the remaining descendants of Andalusian cattle, originally from Spain. So yes, mates, <laughs> the cattle that you actually see down here in Florida isn't entirely native. They're more of a non-native, but that doesn't mean that they're invasive. There is a difference. You know, an invasive is a non-native, but they're causing harm. But the cattle, they don't cause harm to a given environment that they're in. So, much of what is here, you know, especially horses, cattle, and even wild boar, those were all introduced by the conquistadors. They didn't always exist down here, especially when the natives were around. Wow. Either way, if you haven't been, I would uh, highly recommend if you haven't. So, alright. Peace out.